Hold still. Hold still. Don't breathe. Okay. Don't I said, why are y'all getting so many entertainers? Been all down in Jamaica, bleeding and begging. Been all up in Yugoslavia, looking for banjo pickles. So if anybody want to tell me a sad story about Tennessee or wherever the money coming from this place, I'm going to slap them upside their ear till the blood start bleeding out. Damnest thing I ever seen in my life. <laughs> pickers in the world are here. Best band, if any banjo pickers in the better than the ones that's been here on somebody right now, I'm ready to go with you. Show me where they are. should be more things like this throughout the world. приехали из Москвы в Теннесси Банжи Институт. All right, we're really proud to be here on this Tennessee Banjo Institute video. And we're proud that you're here. And uh, we think that there's nothing like banjo music. We spent the better part of our lives playing the, trying to play the five string banjo. And uh, uh, we decided after all this time that the music is not probably gonna ever get any more popular than it is right now. And it's a good thing that it doesn't because if it ever does, we'll have to share it with a whole lot of people we don't know, right, Clark? Right. Yeah. And right now, not only do we all know each other, but there's a good chance that a lot of us are related. So uh, here's a number that dates back to the war between the states. Behind me, if ever I cross that bridge again, I'll pick her up behind me. in a sycamore tree with the wind and the rain all around me tonight i'll sleep in a warm feather bed with the girl i left me oh the girl i left the girl i left the girl i left behind me if ever i cross that bridge again i'll pick her up behind me Oh. 
Oh, she jumped in bed and she covered up her head and she swore I couldn't find her, but I knew dang well that she lied like hell, so I jumped right in behind her. Oh, the girl I left, the girl I left, the girl I left behind me. If ever I cross that bridge again, I'll pick her up behind me. Show you how to kiss her. Give me an ugly girl, show you how to miss her. I want a gal who's nice and fine. Come on, love me all the time. Not an ugly woman like old Mag. She ain't nothing but an egg and a hay. My old missus promised me. She set me free She lived so long Her head got bald She got out of notion Of dying at all Ham bone, ham bone Where you been? All around the world I'm blind again Hold it, boy
name is Dean Epstein, and I'm a retired music librarian from the University of Chicago. This morning, when I saw the Moroccan musicians take their instruments out of the bag, they looked kind of familiar to me. And I reached into my bag and took out a picture that had been made in Jamaica in the 17th century and showed it to them. And they said, those are our instruments. Those pictures had been engraved for Sir Hans Sloan, who was the physician to the royal governor of Jamaica from 1687 to 1689. When he went back to England, he wrote a natural history of Jamaica, which was mainly about the plants and animals and shells. But he included pictures of instruments that were played by the African slaves in Jamaica at that time. Sir Hans Sloan described the instruments that were etched in this way, that is, he described one of them. He said it was made of small gourds fitted with necks, strung with horse hairs, tied longer or shorter as they would alter their sounds. He called this instrument a strum strum, but most people in Jamaica, in Martinique, and on mainland North America called it either banja, banza, or banjo. And the uh, results of their performance carried on through the music we heard later this morning by the group from Jamaica, not in the instruments themselves, although the flutes and the banjo were descendants of African instruments, but in the rhythms and the style of the music, the short melodic phrases, tied the Moroccan music and the Jamaican music together and made them both descendants of the music of Central Africa. There is no question whatever in my mind that the banjo is an instrument of African origin no one who mentioned it before 1800 ever ascribed any other origin to it. But 50 years later, it had been transformed into the product of white American know-how and ingenuity. John will be out in a minute. I want to do a song with a, a banjo that I got about four or five years ago, and it just stayed on the shelf for a little while. I couldn't figure out what to do with this extra drone string over here. It's a six string with two drones. And then I heard this song by, a, I guess it must have been a black cowboy out in Texas and it seemed to get together with this on the, on the uh, riding around the cattle. I'm whooping up a cattle, I'm setting up a straddle, I'm a whooping up the cattle, and I whoop die idle, I'm a yay, I'm a yay, bum die diddle, I'm a day. As I went a riding and a rounding up the cattle, I thought I would be a riding up a straddle, and I whoop die idle, I'm a yay, I'm a yay, bum die diddle, I'm a day. My foot in the stirrup, my seat in the saddle, I'm the best darn cowboy that ever rode a straddle, and I whoop die idle, I'm a yay, I'm a yay, bum die diddle, I'm a day. I'm up every morning before daylight, and before I sleep, the moon shines bright. Whoop, diddle, I'm a yay, I'm a yay, boom, I die, it'll I'm a day. It's a ten dollar horse and a forty dollar saddle, and I'm going to punch in Texas cattle. Whoop, diddle, I'm a yay, I'm a yay, boom, I die, it'll I'm a day. Saddle up, boys, and saddle up well, for I think these cattle have scattered all over. And a whoop, diddle, I'm a yay, I'm a yay, bum, ba, diddle, I'm a day. My seat in the saddle, and I gave it a little shout, and the deep cattle broke, and the herd ran about. And a whoop, diddle, I'm a yay, I'm a yay, bum, ba, diddle, I'm a day. Me and old blue dog arrived on the spot, and we put them in the middle like the ballin' of a pot. And a whoop, diddle, I'm a yay, I'm a yay, bum, ba, diddle, I'm a day. 
We strung them out and the boss made a count and he said, boys, but just a few out. Now whoop, diddle lumber, yay, yumba, yay, bum ba diddle lumber day. It's make a circle, boys, don't lose no time. I'm sure they will be easy to find. Whoop, diddle lumber, yay, yumba, yay, whoop, da diddle lumber day. I'm going back home, not joking or a line. I'm going back home just a yelling and a flying. And a whoop, diddle, I'm a yay, I'm a yay, bum, da, diddle, I'm a day. With my blanket, my gun, and a raw hide rope, I'm a sliding down the trail in an easy load. Whoop, diddle, I'm a yay, I'm a yay, bum, a diddle, I'm a day. I'm whooping up a kettle, I'm a setting up a straddle, I'm a whooping up a kettle, and a whoop, diddle, I'm a yay, I'm a yay, bum, a diddle, I'm a day. To the place where I first saw the light To the sweet sunny south Take me home Where the market would sing me to sleep every night Oh, why was I tempted wrong? I think with regret of the deer on my left Of the Walmarts that sheltered me there Where them gaffers been leaned and they bought just like the old original record, he forgot the words too. of my birth for the children that played around the door where they gather my blossoms that grow around the path they'll echo our footsteps no more
The next one we're going to do, I think, was written by Clayton McMichton, and uh, the title of it is The Hog Trough Reel.
and he was two-time winner of the National Banjo Championship in Winfield, Kansas, and leader of the celebrated Lynn Morris Band. Here is Lynn Morris. All right. Oh, stand by. scout and uh, the scout leader brought a banjo down from the top rack and started playing world is waiting for the sunrise and I like the sound of it I was about nine years old and it was about the time when Flatt and Scruggs were playing on their Beverly Hillbilly show so I thought ah that's one of those I'd like to be able to do that so we talked to the man and he gave me lessons on what was the tenor banjo so I played that for a long time and I'm trying to sound like you know we're all Scruggs and it wasn't happening and he said, well, you just, you know, more lessons, more lessons, more lessons. So I went to a talent show where there was this guy playing five-string banjo. And I heard it, and instantly he was doing what I wanted to do. That's what it was. And I ran up to the guy and said, well, what are you doing? And he said, well, banjo. And I said, well, I have one. Mine doesn't sound like that. And I don't use my fingers. I use my pick. He said, well, let me see it. So we went over, and I opened up the case. And he looked in there. He said, oh, hell, that's just a tenor. <laughs> so I got real frustrated with banjo for a couple of years, gave it up, just started playing on guitar, but um, came back to it. Here's a good example of a rag that you can cross pick, and lots of mandolin players do this sort of thing. So you get. Uh... cascading effect of strings ringing at the same time with a flat pick, which you can't usually get with a flat pick like you can with finger picks. You can play the instrument as you would a guitar, just playing lines, which is a, the, a normal musical approach, but you can get into some of the esoteric sort of uh, old-timey patterns and, and combine and expand on those, where you're going in and out between different strings, like this sort of thing, where you'd go down, 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 and up, or up, say, up, down, 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 like this, up on one string, and then down, down, down. And if you do that, fast sort of metronomically you don't want to slop over it but you get this effect and if I play through a quarter arpeggio just the way the third stack it sounds like this
Thank you. <clears throat> uh, we're going to play Western Swing uh, the way it was started back in the early 30s. We'd pick out a song. And they didn't have the country people writing songs for us then, so we'd pick out a song we wanted to do. We'd play the first course where you'd know what we were playing. And then from then on, you got to decide what we're playing. Each guy takes a hot course. Back in those days, they called it noodling. So we're going to play the lead for one course, and then we're going to noodle all the way around. Washington Lee Swing. like a tailor followed by uh, three reels um, and uh, first is called the gravel walks second is a composition of a philadelphia man called ed reevey called the hunter's house and then the, the third tune is called the humors of ali connell
consider me a person who plays all kinds of different music on the banjo. Um, I've spent a lot of time listening to the traditional music and trying to learn it and, and I like to do that but I think that I'm, I'm probably better at, at taking contemporary sounds and, and sounds from all over the place and trying to play them on a, on a banjo with three finger style from bluegrass and the different techniques that I've developed that allow me to play scales and modes and um, allow me to attack jazz and uh, Irish music and different things. I just like to try and come up with different sounds on the banjo. That's probably the main thing. Thank you. 
Thanks to Mark Schatz on the bass on that song. Music is basically a simple gesture or a more complex gesture. It, <laughs> it's just gesturing is all that it really is. Eh? Gosh, I saw other people doing it on other instruments. I saw horn players just, you know, doing it, and I thought, why, why, you know, why can't a banjo do that too? That's all. And a lot of uh, a lot of what it was, uh, I went to a jazz guitarist, and he said, "Well, all you got to do is learn your major and minor scales." Oh, well, great. So, about four years later, <laughs> well, one one thing I could say is like how you do the blues. You know, if you if you were doing the blues, like a. By, by the time I got to that point in the blues, I'd be going. There's actually more transitional type of movement in, in types of uh, jazz progressions, but you're still getting the basic G, C, D. It'd be like, uh, you know, if, if, I, if I sit and try to do it, it's not going to work. If it just happens, it happens. What you get is what you It doesn't matter what it is, you know. If I'm doing... It's a different kind of art form. They overlap, you know. free myself, I just uh, do whatever comes out. I have no idea what's going to happen. This is how it is now. And there's only one now. And it keeps going. One, two, three. Thank you. 
This I learned, um, it's a song called Reel and Rock from an old lady named Aunt Zipporah Rice from Sodom, North Carolina, where um, there isn't another old fellow that plays the paper bag. That's how I learned to do that from Morris Norton up there. But um, Aunt Zip was uh, always saying ca crazy kind of things like, um, be good to your friends. Without them, you'd be a total stranger. My favorite was, don't make love by the garden gate. Love is blind, but the neighbors ain't. This song has some uh, kind of that kind of poetry in it. It's called Reel and Rock. Now the girls up on a rocky road must think that I am blind. Just one girl that I can see, she's always on my mind. Reel and rock my little Betty Ann, reel and rock I say. Reel and rock my little Betty Ann, I'm bound to go away. Now it's peaches in the summertime, apples in the fall. If I don't get Betty and I'll have no one at all. Reel and rock my little Betty again. Reel and rock, I'd say. Reel and rock my little Betty and I'm bound to go away. Well, I went to see my Betty and she was standing at the door. Gingham dress in her hand. A little bit feet on the floor Reel and rock my little bed again Reel and rock I say Reel and rock my little bed again I'm bound to go away Oh, reel and rock my little bed again Reel and rock I say Reel and rock my little bed again I'm bound to go away Thank you. You're very nice, and just for that, we're going to play you a song. It's kind of the religious type here. It's called I Can't Sit Down. Sit down. Oh, I can't sit down. Sit down. Oh, can't sit down. Why don't you sit down? Well, I can't sit down. I, I just got to heaven and I gotta walk around. Oh, sit down. Sit down. Why don't you sit down? Well, I can't sit down. I just got to heaven and I gotta walk around. I see people dressed in white. Must be the children of the Israelites. I see people dressed in blue. Must be my children here are coming through. Sit down. Mm, I can't sit down. Sit down. Oh, I can't sit down. Why don't you sit down? Oh, I can't sit down. I just got to heaven and I gotta walk around. Mm, sit down. Mm, sit down. Sit down. Oh, why don't you sit down? Oh, I can't sit down. I just got to heaven, heaven and I gotta walk around. I see people dressed in red. Must be the children that Moses led. Yonder goes people all dressed in black. They give up and turn in back. Sit down. Mm -hmm. Can't sit down. Sit down. Oh, can't sit down. Why don't you sit down? Oh, I can't sit down. I 
just got to heaven and I gotta walk around. Sit down. No, I can't sit down. Sit down. No, I can't sit down. Why don't you sit down? Well, I can't sit down. I just got to heaven and I gotta walk around. Lord, I just got to heaven and I gotta walk around. Can you repeat after me? I say, sailing up. Try it. Sailing up. Oh, I hardly heard you. Try it again. Sailing up. Sailing down. Now, after that, we reverse it. I say, up, you say, down. I say, down, you say, up. Sailing up. Sailing down. Up, down, up and down the river, sailing on, stopping all along the way. The river may be dirty now, but she's getting cleaner every day. People come, people go, come, go, up and down the river, sailing on. Stopping all along the way The river may be dirty now But she's getting cleaner every day Singing here, 
singing there, singing there. Here. There. there, there, up and down the river sailing on, stopping all along the way. The river may be dirty now, but she's getting cleaner every day. Some are young, some are old, old. Young, up and down the river sailing on, stopping all along the way. The river may be dirty now, but she's getting cleaner every day. Catching fish, catching hell, hell, fish, up and down the river sailing home, stopping all along the way. The river may be dirty now, but she's getting clean every day. One more time, sailing up, sailing down, up. Up and down the river sailing on Stopping all along the way The river may be dirty now But she's getting cleaner every day Oh, sing that last line again The river may be dirty now But she's getting cleaner every day What I play also, beside the classic style banjo, is the stroke style banjo. I'm really fascinated with the old, uh, but the predecessor to the claw hammer style. And I, I get it out of books, old books. And it, it, um, it's done on fretless banjo. It's done with the back of the finger, and I use a pick uh, backward. It's called a thimble in the old terminology and um, I'm gonna play a piece here's a tune called the far south this is by Frank B Converse
Thanks very much. I'd like to dedicate this next tune to my brother. He's been real good to me over the years. A lot of good help and good advice. In fact, he told me something once I think I should share with you people. He said, if the banjo was any good, the Beatles would have used it. They didn't use him either. So <laughs> He's my older brother. He's about six months older than I am.
Thank you. First time I heard a banjo probably is when I uh, when I started playing one. When I was about eight years old. I had an older brother that had started playing guitar, and he needed uh, someone to accompany him. So he decided I should play banjo, and he uh, showed me the basic chords on it, and uh, from there on I was on my own. I switch thumb and finger. I alternate back and forth with thumb and finger. And that's, that's the thing that uh, most experts can't pin down because I never use the same pattern. They, ha they say, uh, I have no style, and, and probably they're right. <laughs> because it's, it's something that comes from my brain, I think. I, if I stop to try to show anybody what I'm doing, it, it leaves me. Well, good evening to everybody, and it's real nice to be in y'all's neighborhood this evening. And I don't know what I'm going to do here. I generally hit at this a little bit and miss it, and maybe hit it again over yon and down now, and that's about it. Maybe I can play you an old tune and get along home set now. Sugar Hill, I learned up in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina.
just, uh, I hear a man went through now and then, and I hear him playing, and I just, uh, I love the ba sound of the banjo, and I wanted to learn to play. That, this one's got a tomcat hide in it. Dogs kill the cat, and I said, well, that's a perfect opportunity to, to get up. I always heard that tomcats made the very best hides. And, and they do. I don't see any difference between Tom Cat or she cat a hide. I wouldn't see any difference. But she? I wouldn't see any difference because uh, they're just about the same. But the uh, thing I've noticed is between a, a goat and a, a Tom Cat, is you can see through them. You can't. Most of them you can't see through them, so they, they're thin and tough. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we'll pass on that. Now, this is Men on the Hook. I've, I've won many a contest on this. And you know, I win, I've got all kind of ribbons and everything, but now I, I ain't claiming a bragging, I mean, you know what I mean. This is Men on the Hook. I, I, I learned this when I was a little girl. I played it so much I can play it a little bit yet, but not much. <laughs> So after I studied for a while and learned to play, uh, I decided to come down to Nashville and see if I could get a job in a real band, you know, and I sure got a good job. I was playing with Bill Monroe and the Bluegrass Boys in 1963 on the Grand Ole Opry here in Nashville, and uh, uh, its uh, words don't suffice to, uh, to describe that experience. Uh, it's central to my whole musical life from that point on. Uh, I guess one reason I got the job is because uh, I'd come up with something a little different on the banjo. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Uh, Eric and I are going to do a, a classical uh, piece. It sounds great on the banjo, I think, although when Bach wrote it, he uh, had no idea, I don't think. It's the second bourree from the English suite in A minor. However, this, uh, the bourree is in A major. And then we're going to launch into uh, more, uh, another uh, traditional banjo tune that I wrote uh, a year ago. I think. Two, one, two, three.
Thank you. from here in the Highwood String Band and the Correct Tone String Band and my science teacher, Ivel Eigenbrog, who said I had no future in playing, in learning science and that I better chance of playing a banjo. So, and uh, he said before I learned to uh, play it, I had to go get one. So I went down to the local swap shop and got my first banjo. It was bright red and it was... Uh, Terrible, terrible banjo. So I went back to the same swap shop and I got this one here. It's an old Dobson banjo made in the 1800s. And uh, had my friend Shane Savage Rumba do this little painting here. That's the great white inoculator. He goes into other countries and inoculates them with the uh, spirit of the white man. Not such a great guy. Well, I take my razor blade and I lay Reuben in the sea. I'm starting me a graveyard of my own. Oh, me, oh, Lord, am I. I'm starting me a graveyard of my own. I will chop down my still and go home. 
very much.
Thank you all very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Eddie Edcock, Don Wayne Reno, Courtney Johnson. And ladies and gentlemen, Banjo Meltdown 3 is history. Good night. state got money to point. All my idols are here at the Tennessee Banjo Institute. Uh, Eddie Adcock, Butch Robbins, Bela Fleck, uh, just to name a few, there's so many. I've had a big time all three days up here. Uh, they, I get I don't know how many banjos was here. I didn't count them, but, <laughs> which would be impossible. But I've had such a big time, and I hope it goes on and on and on and on. part of a larger banjo community. It's like, um, it's the thing that I realize when I'm here, uh, that we're all connected, we all love this instrument, we all play in so, so many different ways. Uh, that one thing that holds us all together is we love this sound, something about it, it means something to, to all of us. And so for me, this is like a regrounding, getting to be here for all three days and hang out with all these musicians that I've learned from through the years. Um, and now a lot of them are my friends and uh, it's really a special experience. Sure we disagree on politics, religion, language, a whole lot of other things. And we disagree musically from time to time too. But the astonishing thing is to hear people who love the banjo listening to dozens of different ways of playing the banjo. I'm proud to be here and glad I'm able to play a tune for you. I don't know when I'll ever get back, but if we don't all meet here, I hope we all meet in heaven. <laughs>